What's going on, Vincent Rappasardi, BigBlueUnbiased.com. Thank you to those who've liked, commented, and subscribed. I really appreciate you guys. Make sure to turn notifications on so every time I post, you get a notification and you can come join in on the conversation. I haven't done a video in a few days. We're going to talk about the Giants' defense and their ability to get after the quarterback. We're going to talk about the rotation the Giants have on their offensive line moving forward. Um, we'll talk about Logan Ryan and Wayne Gallman as well, and also Dave Gettleman, okay? Big video on Dave Gettleman. Um, so let's start with that, right? So uh, there are definitely a large uh, group of fans, especially on Twitter. And I think Twitter is a cesspool. Um, a lot of people seem to be rooting against their team. I don't get it. And root against their own general manager. Um, look, if you think Dave Gettleman should be fired, fair enough. I've said that before. If you don't think he's good enough, fair enough. But what I see a lot uh, from people is either they're not going to give him credit for things that he does well, or they're just rooting for his demise. They just want him to fail, and they're rooting against him. And you see a lot of people like that. It's weird. I don't get it. I think he would... I thought, you know, fans root for their GM, for their team. They can still be critical. They can still hold that general manager accountable. But at the end of the day, I mean, that is your team. And it just feels like a lot of people root against... Uh, Dave Gettleman and their team in general to lose. I understand the draft pick situation, but at the same time, you know, the Giants need to start making progress, and I think that's where they're headed, but that's what you should probably root for, right? Don't you want to see more progress? I would think Giants fans would want to see more progress and potentially a win this week versus the Philadelphia Eagles. That would be huge for the Giants, a young football team that's they're trying to make their way into the NFL. It's a young team. Um, but when I talk about anti-Gettleman narrative, I don't mean that people are critical and they're holding him accountable. That's fair. That's fine enough. I understand that. When I say anti-Gettleman narrative, I'm talking about people, like I said, who are just seem to be rooting against the guy and they won't give the guy credit. Okay, that's a narrative where, yeah, you're kind of anti-Gettleman. Someone had pulled up a tweet from years ago, two years ago, uh, where I had said Dave Gettleman was doing a bad job. Well, I was very critical of Dave Gettleman. And someone pulled that tweet up and they said, whoa, what happened? You know, you seem to be saying a lot of things about Dave Gettleman. You're being patient with the current rebuild, and you think he's doing an okay job. Um, but you said this back in 2018 that he wasn't doing a good job. Well, that's the thing, right? If you're going to be objective and you're going to be unbiased, you're going to criticize when necessary, and you're going to uh, give people credit where it's due. That's what being unbiased uh, and being objective is about. I mean, if I just said Dave Gettleman's terrible and I stuck to it, and even if he made good moves, I said, doesn't matter, he's still terrible, he's still terrible, still, and I just stuck to it no matter what, uh, that's something Skip Bayless does, okay? That's what Skip Bayless does. He has an opinion about LeBron James, and to this day, he thinks LeBron James is overrated, and it doesn't matter how many MVPs or championships the guy wins, Skip Bayless sticks to the same exact opinion, even if the facts and the circumstance changes. For me, I like to adapt to the circumstances, to, to the facts, right? And at that moment, the Giants were a win-now team, and they weren't winning. So I criticized Dave Gettleman, and I said, well, what is he doing here? But they committed to a rebuild, which is what they should have done in the first place in 2018. And I said, all right, they're committing to a rebuild. A rebuild takes time. I'm going to be patient. I'm going to give the guy uh, enough time to, you know, correctly or at least attempt to uh, correctly rebuild a football team. It takes time. There's patience. You've know, you got to be patient with it. It doesn't happen overnight for the most part, right? And I think a general manager should be given the time, at least two years, to really rebuild their football team. And this is really the second season of a rebuild. And I call them more of a developing team because they're trying to compete. Last year, they had no chance, okay? But this year, they're trying to compete. And they've played a lot of close games, and they are definitely an improving team. But my point is, right, is that being anti-Gettleman, it just seems like people are, Rudy A, rooting against him, or B, um, they're not giving him credit where it's due. And, I, and what I try to do is give credit where it's due and criticize where a person, a GM, player, coach should be criticized, right? And I think that's the part of being in the middle. I don't like just taking a stance on an opinion and never changing it, even if the facts and the circumstances change. I bet there were a lot of people who hated the draft pick of Daniel Jones. Then last year, you probably liked the draft pick of Daniel Jones. Now, you're probably eh on the draft pick of Daniel Jones. My point is, right, the situation is going to change the way that you evaluate the player, the coach, or the general manager. That's how it goes. So the point is just to, to be fair, right? Be fair, be patient. If you think Dave Gettleman should be fired, fair enough, okay? 
that's your opinion, that's your opinion. All I'm saying is I just find it weird that it seems like a lot of people like root against the guy. If I were to grade his rebuild, right, I didn't like what he did in 2018. Uh, like I said, they started out 1-7. They were a win-now team that wasn't winning. And I was very critical of the guy. But I also know where to give credit where it's due. And right now they're rebuilding. And their rebuild, like I said, 2019 was the first full season. First full season where they really started to rebuild. Obviously this season, I would say a B-, minus, right? I would, I would give them a solid B- minus so far for their rebuild. Barkley is probably the only elite level player that he drafted, but I think there's an interesting young group of players that they have, right? A lot of potential. Bradbury, Williams, Martinez have been really good additions, of, uh, you know, recently over the past year or so for Gettleman uh, to their defense. So I think they're headed in the right direction. I think many people would agree with that. So let's see how the rest of the season plays out. Okay, so let's talk some Giants news here. Um, Joe Judge said he's he's probably going to be rotating. Uh, Will Hernandez, Kevin Zeitler, Shane Lemieux, and according to Judge, um, expect Will Hernandez and Shane Lemieux to play right guard. He's, you're going to see a rotation, right? And you're going to see a rotation at tackle with Thomas, Fleming, and Parrott. And uh, I love this. I really do love this idea because I believe in a meritocracy. I believe that you should earn it, right? You should earn your snaps. And so he's making his offensive line earn their snaps. And Lemieux impressed, especially last week against Washington. Uh, Brian Boldinger broke that down. If you want to go check that out on Twitter, um, Lemieux really added a good uh, a good aspect to their run blocking game. Okay, seems like he's uh, he's going to be an interesting piece moving forward for the Giants. Parrot and Thomas allowed one pressure combined last week. They're moving in a better direction. By the way, Andrew Thomas, tenth ranked offensive tackle and run block win rate. He is getting better. He's progressing. And like I said, you know, Thomas and Jones will really dis ultimately decide uh, the future. For Dave Gettleman. If those guys perform well as we move forward into the end of this year, that basically guarantees Dave Gettleman another year for the Giants. So there's a lot on Thomas and Jones moving forward for Dave Gettleman. But those guys, I would say specifically Thomas, definitely starting to trend in the right direction. And Jones played well right against Washington. Tough defense too. Remember they were eighth in defensive EPA entering last week. Good defense. So I know people look at the opponent and they say, well, it's Washington. Well, they have a good defense. So, good offensive line play last week for the Giants, specifically from Parrott and Thomas. Lemieux as well did well. Um, Mark Colombo believes that Nick Gates can be one of the best centers in the league. Their offensive line is heading in the right direction at the moment. So let's talk about the Giants' defense. Right now, no Lorenzo Carter. Obviously, he's out for the season. O'Shea Ximenez has been hurt. Golden was traded. So the Giants have to piece together a pass rush, right? They really don't have a dominant edge rusher. Fackrell, good player, but not dominant, right? So they're really piecing together a pass rush. And you look at their blitz rate, right? They're 21st in the NFL, 27% uh, blitz percentage. But they're eighth in pressure percentage. So they are literally just piecing things together. They're just finding ways, and they're not even blitzing. It's very interesting the way that they're getting it done. Credit to Leonard Williams. He's had an outstanding season. He has five sacks, but he's up there among defensive tackles and knockdowns and pressures and hits. He has done a great job this season. And Dalvin Thompson, another guy having a fairly productive season. So the Giants, um, again, they don't have an elite level premier Khalil Mack kind of edge rusher, but they're piecing it together. And props to Patrick Graham. I'm really interested to see what he can do when they're healthy, right? When Carter is on the field, when Ximenez is on the field, McKinney is on the field, all of their pieces together eventually next season with some free agent and draft additions. I, I'm really interested to see what he can do. If you give the guy a pass rush, you give the guy another corner, I mean, this Giants defense could be really, really good. So continuing on the path of Giants defense, Logan Ryan. Okay, Logan Ryan over 50 tackles, four pressures. Um, he's got two forced fumbles. He had an interception this past week, uh, the game-clinching interception against Washington. Logan Ryan is a player they need back next season. And you look at what happened with them this year. Baker, right? That situation, they lost a starting corner. Whether you think DeAndre Baker's great or not, they still lost a starting corner. I had that conversation as well on Twitter. And again, someone had brought up a tweet where last year I'd said DeAndre Baker wasn't that great. He started to improve uh, more towards the end of the season. But overall, it was kind of a, not a great year, right? It wasn't a great year for DeAndre Baker. I wasn't really too high on the guy. But at the same time, you lose a starting corner. And when you lose a starting corner like that, now you got to go trade for Isaac Adam, who's not a good player at all. Ryan Lewis is a practice squad kind of player. So 
yeah, I don't think DeAndre Baker is great by any means. I don't think he's this elite-level corner. But I would take DeAndre Baker over Isaac Ayatom and Ryan Lewis, of course. So you lose a starter in DeAndre Baker, the Giants did. Sam Beal opted out, and then Xavier McKinney got hurt. So all of a sudden, I mean, the Giants were hit with key injuries in their secondary. And then they're making a trade for Isaac Ayatom. They're getting Ryan Lewis. I mean, they're just trying to piece things together. Um... And it was kind of panic mode. That's one area where you don't want to be thin at, right? That's one area you want to be good at because teams are throwing the football left and right. So you got to be good in the secondary and you got to have good depth. So Logan Ryan, versatile player. He's a player I feel like the Giants have to bring back. Two-year deal, good versatility, good depth. You can trust him out there. I mean, he does everything. Interceptions, forced fumbles, creating pressure on the quarterback, 50-plus tackles already. I mean, the guy does everything. Whenever you need him, he's there. And uh, that has a lot of value. So we'll finish up quickly with Wayne Gallman. He's 14th among running backs um, in rush yards over expectation percentage. So basically, rush yards over expectation, the you know yards that you're expected to get based on you know blocking, the speed of the running back, the situation, and all those things. Uh, Devonta Freeman, I believe, is last. He's had a tough season. Um, but Wayne Gallman, 14th, which is pretty good for like a backup running back. Someone I think I think they should bring him back next year. His contract ends after the season. I think Wayne Gallman is a really good uh, backup running back to have. 